Grove Roots Brewing Company, the official beer sponsor of the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce. Find them in downtown Winter Haven, Florida. They're also on Facebook.com forward slash Grove Roots Brewing and GroveRoots.com. Happy hour with Johnny and Deuce. Hello, Anthony. Yeah, we back in the back. Don't know you had a long day, but let's interject. Sit back, relax, and have some cold beer. Gotta pay a few bills. Yeah, we're all clear. And it's loose on the loose. You know the tag team champion. We get the biggest pop when we hit the ramp. The outlaws of the new age. And we still got love for the retro ways, you know. Nintendo, Sega Genesis, so many systems, your dreamcast and reminisce, so pull back the curtain and hit the booth, cause it's the Happy Hour Podcast with Johnny and Duke, yeah. Hello, internets, my name is Johnny Womack, of course you got my main man Deuce. Yes, sir. And we are the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce. We're a twice-weekly podcast dropping on Tuesdays and Fridays for your listening pleasure. And every single episode of the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce starts off with the Deuce salute. Yes, sir. Ah, good times. Good times, indeed. And, of course, we love to have special guests with us on the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce. And, of course, Deuce... You know this is, like, after my own heart right here. I got this just for you because I knew just that this me. would be him because I've known you forever, and you're the only guy I know that actually collects soundtracks for movies. And I don't mean, like, the the songs from the movie, like, music songs, like, singing songs. Like, I'm talking the actual instrumental soundtrack. So what better a guest to have just for you, Johnny, than Sid De La Cruz? How are you doing this evening, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. How are you? We're excellent. We're I'm I'm very excited to have you on the show. Um, you're from San Ho from from my notes from IMDb and reading. Um, you're from San Jose, California, and you've done film, video game, and concert composing. And you graduated. Uh, you started studying music at San Jose State University, and then you went on to you got a scholarship to Claremont Graduate University, where you went to receive your master's degree in music composition. Uh, like. Tell us, tell us about that, because like you, have you been like composing your whole life, or is this something you kind of got onto later on in life, or how does how did how'd you get into it? Started, when I went to college, I uh, my mindset was to go to med school. You know, I wanted to become a doctor, and then uh, taking a general class, I you know, had to take general classes, so um, I ended up taking a music course, and uh, I found out that I found myself paying more attention to the music courses than my biology classes. And then uh, I had to take more courses, and then uh, I ended up taking more music courses, and it just, I guess my path kind of just navigated down that way, and uh, I fell in love with it, and I, I changed my major, and then did music. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I uh, Did you have, uh, did you listen to film scores growing up uh, when you were younger, or is this, or is this something that you kind of appreciated later in life? Uh, I think it was more later in life. Uh, growing up, I, I didn't really listen to a lot of film music. I was surrounded by a lot of music. Uh, my parents listened to music all the time. Uh, my my older brother, he was a DJ. Uh, so just uh, growing up, I was always around music. But uh, I, I believe I got into film scoring, you know, film music later on in life. Well, what what uh, for those that haven't heard of of your music like what what type of instrumentation do you use do you are you a piano player do you do you like violin do you use strings uh on your compositions there's a mix of everything like what's your like if they were gonna like Sid De La Cruz quintessential like you know sounds like what what, what do people usually hear when they when they're gonna hear your uh film composition I guess my main instrument would be a guitar uh but when it comes to composing I really like composing for the orchestra so uh I, I think that would be like my weapon of choice, the, the orchestra. So, so how does that work? So, so you, you say you get on a movie and you're in there. Is it, is it usually like because I, I, I when I was a kid, I, I remember our very first film score I ever got on CD was The Patriot by uh, John Williams, and I remember just loving that score, and, and I just became a fan ever since. And I rem and I remember like listening to you have so many different instruments and so many different pieces. Like, how does that work for for you, like when you get a, a project, do you have a completed film in front of you 
and then you compose and write the music to it, or is it kind of bits and pieces, or is it a little bit of everything? Well, uh, it, it varies from project to project. Um, the uh, Sometimes I get a, a project that's uh, completed and ready to go, and I just need to add the music. And then a lot of times, um, actually most of the films that I work on are never completed. Uh, there's still editing to be done. Uh, the sound is not fully there. Um, the, the the graphics are not there. You know, all this animation isn't there. Um, and uh, there's, you know, some scenes where it's just, it just kind of tells me, all right, this is happening with this scene. So um, a lot of the times the films that I get are not completed. And I just kind of have to, uh, uh, I guess, either talk to the director what's going on here at the scene or uh, just kind of wing it. And then um, uh, I, I might, I may or may not have to do a revision at, at you know, different scenes, but for the most part, yeah, uh, the movies I get are never completed. Is it, It's cool because with, like, with uh, social media and inst- and Facebook Instant Messenger, like the way things have like evolved throughout the years, I think it's really interesting how you could talk to you, – you, in theory, you may never even meet the director in person, right, like you, for a film that he's doing or he or she's doing. Like you could have a project that you could just be in California and you just compose it, right, and then send it to them. That's right. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of films can be done that way. So, how do you come up? I, I obviously, you, you know, you've done several different films. But how do you come up with an idea if, when, say, you get a project? Like, what's the first thing you do? Do you sit on your guitar and just strum some notes out? Do you, you know, how, how does that idea come to you for when you get a, a project? It, it comes in different ways. Um, and it, it depends on, on the director as well. Sometimes uh, some directors really want control over the music. So they tell me, all right, this is what I want. Specifically, I want this, 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 this. I want this to happen. I want you to use, I want you to use these instruments and things like that. Um, and there's other times where directors give me the complete freedom to do what I to do what I want. And uh, so I guess it would vary from project to project. But uh, when I when I do kind of start, I kind of look at the picture. I, I guess it kind of tells me how I should approach uh, the the scene. Um, I know there's some people that kind of uh, uh, compose. Uh, a suite where they, where they kind of uh, just make a, a good piece of music and then later on kind of adapt it and change things uh, to the scenes. Um, I really don't work that way. Um, I kind of more take a look at the, pic- take a, uh, look at the picture and then kind of like eat what I should write. Okay. So, so how, how does it work when you're about to go into score with it? Like, you know, at the string section or a horn section, how do you come up, like, how do you start off with that? Do you have to have sheet music already laid out? Is it kind of more of like you ch- you go uh, work as you go and you change things as you go? Or how do you, how does that work when you're about to score with the with the orchestra? Well, uh, there's some times where I, I do kind of notate things like on, on you know, traditional uh, pen and paper up uh, you know, paper on sheet music. And then there's just times where I, I just kind of um, just get at the keyboard and start writing. And then um, because, you know, uh, uh, I could easily put things into the computer, I could easily take them out as well. So I could write something, and if, to me if it's garbage, and if I don't like it, hit the delete button and start fresh. But that's typically, I guess, how I work. Um, I, I usually kind of uh, just... Just, just dive right into it and just go, go at it. Um, and uh, I guess there's times where I just don't like it and I just get rid of it or maybe even put it to the side and maybe uh, that could be useful for a different cue later on down. Um, but, but yeah, that's that's kind of like my, my process. And by the way, this is not the only way of doing it because everyone does it different ways. You know, if you were to ask like a, like a Hans Zimmer or a John Williams or, or people like that, they would... Uh, they all approach it in different ways. It's just that is how I do it. I, I'm a big fan of uh, Bear McCreary. Uh, he he he's known for you know big. He's really big known for Outlander. That's like his big baby. That's his baby that he like really works on. 
Uh, and for me, it's like he doesn't do a lot of his own scoring. Like he actually he'll he'll write stuff on piano, and then he has someone that will actually score everything for him for the different instruments. And so he doesn't do that part of it. Like he'll come up with the theme and he'll do he'll do all of it on piano, and then he will like have a person come in and actually separate the music into you know whatever key and whatever you know he's looking for and all that. So I think it's fascinating that not necessarily. Do you, some people write, compose the music and write the music, and then some people conduct it. You know, so it's a little bit. You know, everyone has their own job. Do you do the whole thing, or do you have people help you along the way? How does that work? I actually do everything myself. Um, I, I guess primarily because I'm. I I like to have a lot of control over my music. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, but I do like to have control over it. Typically, sometimes kind of like what you're saying with Bear McCreary and how he he writes a. a uh, a melody and he gets someone to orchestrate it that, that's a good way of uh, working and I, I believe he works that way because he does a lot of TV work and a lot of TV music has to be turned around so quick um, so uh, it's, it's, it could be really challenging for a composer to you know, work on a TV show and put out music so quick um, and I, I believe that's why he, he does it that way um, but for me, uh, I, I, don't know, I guess I just, I, I guess I'm a control freak. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I, I yeah, I, I think that's, uh, that's why I, I kind of just prefer to do everything myself. So how much time on average do you have to work on a film? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that all depends uh, on, yeah, I guess, the deadline the director has. Um, sometimes uh, I've, I've worked on films where I need to, finish an entire movie in a month and that really is not enough time um but uh you know I, i'm up eight hours plus a day working on this kind of stuff uh, and there's other times where I, I have a little bit more elbow room so like the movie i'm working on now i have a little you know wiggle room so i you know i don't have to deliver everything in one month so um i guess it would all depend on on the director and how soon they need the product to be done uh, is there certain programs that you work with on your computer? Yeah, uh, I have a couple uh, programs. Uh, I, I use Pro Tools. Uh, that uh, I use that to kind of like host my uh, my video and a lot of uh, what we call printing. Uh, so we, we, we do a, a lot of, um, I guess, exporting of sounds via Pro Tools. And then uh, my sequencer, I, I, uh, <clears throat> I like to use uh, FL Studio, but... Uh, uh, there's, uh, I kind of also use Cubase as well. But for me, my workflow, I believe FL Studio is just uh, much easier, much user-friendly, uh, much quicker, uh, for me at least. You know. What's the uh, most complex score that you've done to date? It, it, you know, it's probably, um, there is a short film that I did, um, or actually I'm, uh, I'm kind of like on and off on the project because um, it's, it's not finished yet. That that film, it, uh, it was a little bit more complex for me because it was uh, it took me out of my element. Um, it, it was an avant-garde film, or is an avant-garde film. I typically don't compose in that style, uh, which is fine. Um, it kind of like helps me think outside of the box, help me think uh, in a different way than I normally do. And uh, that kind of like, um, at least for me, it was it, even though it's not very, uh, I guess, complex to, I guess, to the average ear. But, but I guess for me, in the way I kind of approached it, and, and because I was new to that style of composing, it was complex for me. Um, but I enjoyed it because yeah, I haven't done anything like it. And I like doing stuff like that. It's something that, you know, I, I typically work on a lot of action movies. Um, and then to kind of like, jump ship and, and do something completely different. Uh, for me, I, I like it uh, because I don't, I guess, kind of get stuck in this in this motion of, of kind of like doing the same thing over and over and over. Do you have a, uh, I know that's a tough question, do you have like a favorite, like your, your most proud of piece that you've worked on so far? Uh, I, you know what, to be honest with you, I don't think I do. Um, I, I like all my music equally. There, there is this one movie that I, there was a short movie that I kind of worked on uh, that is uh, kind of like Star Wars inspired, um, and it hasn't been released yet. I believe they're still working on it. I thought that that score came out pretty cool. 
Um, hopefully, uh, it, it'll get done soon so it could come out. But um, I think that one was pretty cool because I had a lot of time to work on it. So uh, I was able to kind of really dive into it and kind of like, uh, you know, do revisions here, revisions there, you know, take things out, put things in. And uh, I have more time to play with. All, all, all my music I, I, I've done, uh, I think I, I, I like them all equally. Well, it's interesting you brought up Star Wars. I mean, you, you've you've got to be happy as a film composer, like how, how much Star Wars is back in the limelight again uh, and how popular. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, that's it's one of the greatest films of all time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it, it was something really cool that when uh, this director approached me, he's like, hey, I have this project. Are you interested? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was really cool. Well, so how do you, do you have, uh, how does that work? Do you have like an agent or do people seek you out from seeing other films and other, do you have like studios? Like how does that work from your point of view or is it pretty random all over the spectrum? I wish I had an agent. If I did, uh, life would be much easier. Uh, but no, it's just, uh, I get work from, I guess, different, different ways. Either, you know, me networking with people, uh, word of mouth recommendations, um, but it's, it's a lot of me actually going out and, and just, just kind of networking with people, meeting people, and uh, kind of, you know, just rubbing elbows with them and just kind of just talking to them, kind of, uh, you know, yeah, meeting people. And, and, and I guess L.A. is a, a pretty good place to do that. A lot of people here are, are, are filmmakers, so um, it's a good, good spot to be. That's true. Being in California, there's, you know, like you said, a lot of filmmakers. What's it like to see – to see if your film completed with your music in it? Oh, it, it's, it, it's, it's an amazing feeling. You put so much hard work into it. At, at the end, you kind of like, you kind of see it, and you're like, wow, that's, I, I can't believe I actually did something like that. You know, It's, uh, it, it's an amazing feeling. It's, uh, um, it, it's great. I, I love it. And, and uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I went on your page, uh, and I saw how excited you were because you have a poster behind you that people can't see right now, but it's for a movie called uh, Prayer Never Fails. And it, and it came out on DVD, and you were just, like, so excited because it was at Walmart or Best Buy. I don't remember which store it was at. Uh, yeah, uh, that movie, um, it's I guess it's uh, currently released at Walmart. I believe Walmart has uh, some sort of deal with a distribution company where uh, Walmart would, uh, has that movie for, I believe, 60 days. And then after uh, they have like an exclusive deal, and then after those sixty days are up, uh, Target, Best Buy, um, uh, Amazon, all the online stores, you know, iTunes, all you know, all that kind of stuff, um, they're going to start distributing it. So um, I believe maybe I think next month is it? Check my calendar, but I think it's coming up where um, it's, it's going to be available in other outlets, you know, Target, Walmart, Best Buy. Uh, Amazon, iTunes, Google Play. That's got me an awesome feeling. Seeing your work distributed everywhere. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's a great feeling. It, just because it's a, uh, it, it's really difficult to achieve something like that, and um, it, it's it's it, it doesn't happen often. When it does, it's it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it feels so good. Do you work uh, ever work with choirs? Uh, I. Uh, no, I don't. Um, <clears throat> I haven't worked with a choir. Um, I guess just because it hasn't really been called for, but I, I would have loved to. You know, I, 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 in college, I was in choir, uh, so yeah, I, I would love to work with a choir. Um, but as of right now, I, I haven't. That's interesting because a, a lot of I talk to um, different people that you know are doing independent, you know, composing and whatnot, and they were like. It's a whole different animal when you do like uh, choir work because not only do you have to have the the music you know on key or sometimes dissonant with what you're doing, you have to like it's a whole way of thinking is a little bit different process when you're adding new voices because like you look at John Williams like he's he's only known for doing choir work later on in his career, but earlier in his career he didn't do any choir work. It wasn't until later on you know in the 90s that he actually started doing choir work. And some, some composers don't like doing it because it's, it's a challenging task 
to be able to, you know, go and meet and get all these people in the room and practice with them and, and that whole process. Because I'll, I'll watch, like, you know, like Brian Tyler or somebody, you know, online and, and it's sitting there watching the, the takes and the takes and the takes, you know, you know, trying to get the – maybe someone's out of – off pitch or something and off key or whatever, and then they have to redo it. And so it seems like it would be a very challenging thing, but something fun, you know, if you ever get to do it one day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah choir is a is – a, is a, I guess is on my to-do list. I would love to do it. But no, you're right. Uh, choir is uh, – it, it is a, a different beast. And even the way it's notated, it, it, it's it's notated differently than you would, you know, notate, I guess, like a piano or a violin. Um, it just has a different notation process. But no, yeah, you're right. Absolutely right. So there's a lot of piano in uh, Prayer Never Fails and uh, a lot of string work as well. But that piano is, like, in the forefront. Like, there's, there's almost there's – almost piano and like i think maybe in every track because uh, i was listening you can for those at home you can listen to the soundtrack on spotify and i think you have uh itunes or something like that as well people can find you how, how can people find your music yeah that's right uh there's some stuff on spotify there's some stuff on the um uh I, I, youtube i believe um, soundcloud that's right soundcloud um but you know you're right uh, a lot there's a lot of piano in the uh prayer never fails and, and that was um a direct request from the director. He wanted a piano and, and strings, and primarily that's what he wanted in the score, uh, uh, strings and piano. So uh, I had to, you know, use that as kind of like my main palette. Yeah, it, it's interesting too because, like you said, you do a lot of action movies. So, like, how does that work when you're when you're composing an action movie as opposed to something a little bit slower paced, you know, s slower moving, if you will, uh, with uh, *Prayer Never Feels*. Uh, well, in, in action movies, I, I you know I have the entire orchestra to play with, uh, so um, typically that's what end up, you know that's what I end up using. Uh, you know, you know, the woodwind section, the string section, the brass section, percussion, and and I also incorporate some kind of like you know synthesizer sounds. It, it's a little different. It's a little different because I have uh, I guess more colors to play with. You know. Uh, who do you think? Uh, who do you say is like maybe your biggest influence when it comes to composing? Uh, I guess there's several people I kind of look up to. Uh, of course, you know Hans Zimmer and John Williams. That's kind of a given. Um, I do like Brian Tyler. Um, as a matter of fact, I probably think I could probably relate more to him uh, than than most composers. Uh, I like I do like um, uh, John Powell a lot. Uh, his animation movies uh, they're really awesome. Um, but with Brian Tyler, I, I guess I, 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 I guess to me, because Brian Tyler, he's, he, he does a lot of you know live action movies, and recently he's been doing a lot of DJing, uh, you know, just playing like at festivals or at clubs, um, and that's something that, that that I could do as well. I know how to DJ. Um, he does a lot of uh, music with, I guess, um, pop music influences in him. Uh, so sometimes he might have some hip hop in there. Some rock music influences, uh, music that I could do, you know, outside of film. Uh, yeah, this, that's, I, could, you know, I like doing music like that as well. Um, so I think that I probably relate myself more to uh, Brian Tyler. Yeah, I, lo I love Brian Tyler. You know, for those who who aren't familiar, uh, Brian Tyler, uh, he he was kind of like. He's been around for a while, but you didn't realize it, and then it was like you know he did like, I think he did. Um, John Rambo, and he did, uh, I think he did um, uh, one of the Final Destination movies, and then he got really big with the, the Fast and Furious movies, and then he got he got big on, um, what was it, Now You See Me, I think he, was, he did the score for that, so like there's a lot, he's done like really big films now, and, and that's what's, it's cool to see a, a, a composer's journey, like I imagine, I haven't asked you, but do you remember the first uh, piece that you worked on? The piece I worked on would be, gosh, uh, it was for a short film. Uh, I don't think that film really ever did anything. It, like it didn't go out to do, like it didn't go out to festivals or, or anything at all. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a short film, and uh, I don't remember the music, but I do remember working on the movie. Okay, so like, how long ago was that? How long have you been um, uh, scoring for? Let's see, maybe two thousand eleven. Maybe I think it is. 2011, 2012, around that time. I believe it was around that time. 
and on your IMDb, I want to ask you about this because on your IMDb credit, you have uh, credit for a video game called Con Concave. Concave, yeah. It's a uh, it's a game that I worked on. I don't think it ever. You know, I don't think it actually really went anywhere or did anything. Um, I did work on the music. Um, it, it was along the lines of like a StarCraft. Um, um, the, the game was, I, I guess, very similar to a StarCraft. You know, where um, you have your whole army, you kind of control them, you know, tell them to go here, tell them to go there, and in in battle. Yeah, so the music was uh, along those lines. Uh, do you play video games at all? Uh, I, I wish I did. That's like a, a big industry right now. Uh, I wish I did. I, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of uh, time to play games. Uh, a lot of the free time that I get is kind of spent on, on working on, on these projects. Um, but hopefully down the road when I... when. Uh, I guess I could start getting into it, you know, because that is a pretty cool field, and you know, I could, you know, play games and not only play them, but kind of like study the music as well, you know, kind of uh, see what's uh, really going on in the game world as far as music, you know. So it's fascinating to hear, you know, like composers, you know, not only doing, you know, film and television, but getting into the video game industry, and uh, you know, I hope you get to do some more because I, I mean, that's an interesting field. Oh yeah, that's that's something that I, I would love to get more into, um, uh, just because it's uh, you know like I said, it, that field is it's, it's it's been growing for a while and it doesn't seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. Uh, so that's something that I, I would love to kind of like uh, dabble in. Well, yeah, it's cool because like I, I you know in the beginning you know video game music was done like synthesizers like actually like MIDI and all that MIDI controllers and like it was. You know, you look at like Koji Kondo, you know, creating the Zelda Legend of Zelda theme and Mario theme and all that, and to, to see like nowadays, I, it's not the first, it's not the first uh, video game that had a full orchestra, but the one that really turned people's heads was the God of War uh, soundtracks. Those had full choir, full forty-piece orchestras, and that really turned people's attention. You're like, wow, video games are really like they're putting a lot of time and effort into video games now. And then that was back in the PlayStation 2 era, you know, years ago, back in 2004, 2005, and, uh, you know, over a decade ago. And it's awesome to kind of hear, you know, you hear a Brian Tyler, you hear Bear McCreary composing a video game score, and you're like, wow, this could be in a movie. It's that good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I guess a, a lot of video games are, <clears throat> I guess the developers really want that cinematic sound, you know, uh, kind of give it that... Uh, I guess that, that punch, that, that oomph that, you know, that the orchestra brings. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's really cool. Do you work with the same um, orchestras, or is it different uh, people they bring in for each film, or how does that work? Uh, well, I haven't really, I guess, um, in the movies that I work on, uh, sometimes there's a budget for the orchestra, sometimes there isn't. Um, so a lot of times, kind of like what you said, you're talking about MIDI and all that kind of stuff. Um, music, music, you know, technology has advanced so much that uh, we have the, uh, the orchestra at our fingertips. Uh, a lot of that stuff sounds just, uh, I mean, you can't beat the or real orchestra, but it sounds really close to it, and you could kind of like get away with it. Um, so that's that's kind of what I what I mostly do, um, just because a lot of the stuff that I work on is a lot of independent type of uh, movies, so they don't have, like, these blockbuster budgets where I could, you know, really afford, like, an, an awesome orchestra. Um, but I'm, I'm in the talks of working with one pretty soon. That's, um, that's so we'll see, how, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally excited for it. Well, we're going to take a small break, and uh, we'll be right back with the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce. This episode of the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce is brought to you by Retro Game Treasure. Retro Game Treasure is an amazing monthly subscription service. They send you custom tailored boxes straight to your door from the video games that you love. You go on there, you have a wish list, you have your console of choice. They'll send you games from an assortment of consoles like NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Game Gear, Game Boy Color, Xbox, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, GameCube, and many more. Now announcing they are delivering straight to you Nintendo DS games and PSP games. What do the listeners of the Happy Hour get, Deuce? 
Put in happy hour in the promo box and you'll get $2 off your order. Remember, with Retro Game Treasure, you get classic video games delivered every month. Go to RetroGameTreasure.com, pick your consoles, set your preferences, and add to your wish list. And don't forget to tell them that the Happy, Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce sent you. And we're back with the happy hour with Johnny and Deuce. Of course, I'm Johnny. I got my main man, Deuce. What's going on, man? And we have uh, Sid De La Cruz. He's an awesome composer from San Jose, California. And we would be remiss if we did not ask you uh, what you're currently working on right now. Uh, right now, I'm currently working on a movie called The Tone. Uh, it's an action movie. Um, and it stars, uh, I guess, WWE superstar Seamus. He comes out in the movie. Um, and uh, the movie's about um, a special ops soldier uh, goes to there's hijackers who who, uh, who take over this building and the special ops soldier uh, her daughter's uh, locked inside so she has to uh, kind of find a way to like rescue her daughter and kind of like you know take down uh, the hijackers okay so that so this is uh, uh, would you consider an action an action movie right Oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So it has your no, act- Johnny. I thought that was a rom com. He was no, no, talking no, no. about. No, I mean the way you approach. <laughs> from, I'm talking about from film composition, from your point of view. Not talking about what's in the movie, but like from your point of view as composing, you're you're taking it from like an action mindset. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, we love. I mean, De- Deuce and I love uh, wrestling. We've been. I mean, we've been watching wrestling for. Yeah, we're a couple of hardcore wrestling geeks, and I. I wanted to throw this question out there, and I don't know where it's going to land, but it, have you been able to interact with the actors at all? Have you been able to, like, interact with Seamus and maybe ask anything of him or talk to him at all? Uh, n- no, I haven't, unfortunately. Uh, I believe uh, uh, this movie wasn't filmed in California. If it was, I-, I would definitely be on set and kind of, like, you know, kind of just hang out there and kind of just like bingle, you know, but... uh the movie was, wasn't filmed here in California, uh, so I, I haven't, I didn't have the chance to kind of talk to anybody there. I wish I did. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, on, you know, the whole, how many movies would you say or percentage-wise do you actually get to hang out on set and, like, go to the set, watch it being filmed, and kind of maybe get some cues or get some ideas of the movie from actually being on set? Uh. There are times where I do have the opportunity to go, but um, because I'm busy working on, on you know different projects, I, I can't make it. Um, so uh, I think maybe I've had maybe two, three opportunities to go, um, but I just um, I just don't find any time to kind of squeeze that time in there. Um, but uh, I would really, really want to go. There's this movie that I'm going to be working on soon. Um, it's, it's it's a Western movie, uh, so hopefully I, I I could actually have time and make make time to go to go uh, see the filming of that. That sounds awesome. I, you know, you talk about west the westerns and stuff like that, and you know, you've got to you've got to talk about um, another composer. I might butcher his name, uh, Ramin Javadi. He uh, obviously it's, he he composed the music for Westworld and he's done Game of Thrones and all that. Uh, that guy is really taken off as a composer as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I've had the chance to meet him. Oh, he's he's a awesome. really nice guy. Yeah, I've uh, I've been in the studio and uh, he's he's a he's a really nice guy. You know, really down to earth, you know, really calm, cool, cool. You know, yeah, he's, he's awesome. That's awesome. And, and his music's great. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a he's a great composer, and uh, it's really cool to see him. You know, uh, get because I don't know if you experience this, but with me, it's like I don't know a lot of other people that listen to just film scores by themselves, and like I think we're a rare bunch. And so, like, I have a Facebook group, uh, and that I created myself. Uh, it's called the Film Scores Enthusiasts, 
and it it's literally just all of us that love film scores and we geek out about them and we just talk about them all day long. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's I mean, and and in the group I've started it's been out for a year. I think we only have like maybe like fifty members. That, I, mean, I that, thought that all six of you had lunch last week. <laughs> uh, I didn't know you'd have gotten all the way up to fifty. But it's cool to know other people that you know uh, that love film scores and that actually listen to it as standalone listens. Because I literally will buy soundtracks, even if I haven't seen the film. Like I just love the composer. I will buy the soundtrack on vinyl or CD uh, and just listen to it. And it's a really cool experience. And I love talking to other people that do that as well. Uh, you seem like you're super busy with like composing all the time. But do you ever get a chance to sit down and just listen to some compositions by other composers? Yeah, uh, uh, just not too long ago, I was able to listen to Brian Tyler's uh, of Fate of the Furious or Furious of the Fate. Or... Yeah, Fate, yeah of the Fate, Fate of the Furious. Furious. Yeah, yeah, I actually just saw that like last week. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it was a pretty cool score. I, I liked it. I liked his music. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of his music, so I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, it's cool because, you know, some composers like to intermix, you know, like John Powell and uh, Brian Tyler, they like to use like um, synthesizers and, and electronic drums and stuff like that as well in their scores. And uh, it's interesting to kind of hear like the mixing of like R&B and like orchestrations and whatnot. That's right. Yeah, I, I've kind of adopted the same uh, way of, of like uh, composing. I, I have like a synthesizers and you know electronic sounds in my compositions um it just adds a you know a different palette to to, to, to you know to, to to your to you know to your um, to your music you know it, it's something that i like and and i, and I, I continue to do yeah, because, I mean, it, just to quickly interject, like, I love synthesizers and the new Blade Runner is coming out. And one of the film scores I remember, and, of course, I'm not near as big a film score guy as you two are, but Vangelis' soundtrack for the original Blade Runner with all the synth synthesizers, at the time as a kid, I was like, this has to be the future of music. Like, this is going to be what we're doing for the next 20 years is stuff like this. And then it kind of, you know... That was the 80s, and it kind of fell off. But now to hear, like, the new soundtrack for the new movie, because I'm not going to lie, I, I wish I could get a cut of just the music from the trailer without all the words, and so I could hear the soundtrack, because it sounds like they're really trying to copy Evangelis again, if I'm saying that correctly. And uh, I think Vangelis or Vangelis, something, or something yeah. like, I forget how you pronounce it. But uh, it sounds like they're really trying to copy that again because the other one I really liked as a kid was Buckaroo Banzai Across yeah. the Eighth Dimension because that also was really like synthesizer heavy. And I, I, man, I love me some synthesizers, man. You throw synthesizers into anything, I think it makes it like a hundred times better. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it, you're right. Like all this kind of stuff. Uh, the the uh, Blade Runner actually looks like a pretty cool film. Um. I believe uh, with the Tron Legacy, also was like very big on synthesizers as well, um, and I, I was a, you know, I'm a big fan of that score as well. You know, Daft Punk and uh, I believe Joseph Trapanese uh, was working on that film as, as well as Toby Chu. I uh, actually I'm a huge fan. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm a big fan of uh, Henry Jackman. Uh, Sorry, I'm getting to geek out with you right now, but like Henry Jackman, for those who don't know, uh, he got really big uh, doing the Kick-Ass film, uh, the very first Kick-Ass film. But he, he, you know, kind of brought him in the mainstream. He obviously worked with other composers on the film as well, but like his main theme, awesome. And then he went on to do uh, uh, probably one of his biggest films, Big Hero Six. That movie was just sublime. He mixed guitars, he had orchestrations, he had synthesizers. Uh, you know, now he's kind of in the limelight with Disney because, you know, he did Wreck-It Ralph before that. And, like, so he's he's getting to really experiment a lot with his sounds, too. Yeah, 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 you're right. Um, I've, I've had a chance to meet Henry Jackman. He's a, he's a cool guy. Um, but, yeah, his, uh, his score for Big Hero 6 was, was really cool. Um, it was just uh, – uh, it was a little bit different from what he normally does, which I thought was really cool. It's uh, – it's um, – I, I liked it. He's he's an awesome composer. Yeah, he's really great, and uh, it's it's awesome too because like you as a composer yourself, it's it's gotta be cool to kind of hear other people and you, you you know musicians influence other musicians, you know, and like it's gonna be neat to be like going into a film 
and you watch something and you're like, oh, I like what he did here. I, I want to see if I can replicate something or, or create my own version of this, uh, in this, you know, when you're in your uh, studio. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's funny that you bring it up because uh, a lot of times when I watch movies, um, I, I, I listen to the music, but I, I kind of study it as I watch the movie. So I, I'm watching the movie. I'm like, oh, uh, Henry Jackman did this. I'm going to steal this, kind of put it on my tool belt, and kind of like, uh, you know, when it's, you know, uh, I guess pull it out whenever I need to and kind of like, you know, change things here or there and kind of make it my own. It's like, oh, this is kind of like a really cool idea. Um, and uh, I, I find myself doing that a lot, kind of just like uh, – studying the music or listening, you know, paying really close attention to the music as I watch the movie for the first time. So you can learn, like, uh, you know, action cues and learn different transitions and stuff like that because that's, that's – because it's all – like, the the music itself is – even for people that don't listen to film scores by themselves, they, they, they don't realize, like, how much of an influence the music has uh, on the film and also when not to put music in a film because there's moments where the movie needs silence com- – you know, and then there's moments where you just need like a piece of piano, or if you're doing a full orchestrated piece, you know, you have to have that bombastic, you know, you know, percussive elements to it as well. So it's it film scores are just all all over the gamut, all over the spectrum, if you will. There's this one uh, YouTube clip I seen. It was posted on Facebook, and it was a, uh, and they're talking just about that how music can influence a certain scene. And uh, they had a scene. It was a Star Wars scene. So Darth Vader comes out, and then taking out Han, uh, uh, John Williams score and they put in uh, some other music. It was like a pop song. It was, um, uh, I forget what song it was. It, it was one of those, you know, lovey-dovey romantic type songs. And uh, it really changed the tone of that scene uh, from, you know, a menacing and, and, you know, evil to very kind of like sweet and kind of like uh, just very loving. Um, it, it, the picture's the same. But the music is what kind of really changed the tone of the scene. And uh, you're right. Like Music could have like a huge influence on, on what emotions uh, we want uh, or what emotions the, the audience wants to feel. Yeah, I also think, too, it's like, you know, with, with uh, good compositions, you know, John Williams, if you really break down his music, a lot of his music really wasn't that complex. Uh, I mean, sure, he worked with multiple, you know, orchestras in his day, and he also did experimental stuff like harp leaps, like it was just 80 synth stuff, you know, all you know, just nothing but synth sounds. And then, you know, uh, you know, he he got to do experiment with uh, Memoirs of a Geisha with more of that Oriental sound, you know. Uh, and so, like, it's it's cool to kind of hear, you know giving yourself challenges, like you said before when you did the avant-garde uh, short film. Like, it's cool to challenge yourself as well. Oh yeah, and uh, and I, I believe that's how composers grow. That uh, when when you're you know when you're working on something that's kind of foreign to you or new to you, um, you're kind of forced to kind of learn how to do it, and uh, it, it it's 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 a it's a way of learning and growing. You know? it's uh, for sure. Well, and it's and it's also for for Williams' credit, it's a little bit easier, I guess, if you're getting to work with someone like Yo Yo Ma. So. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that guy's yes. a beast on cello. Uh, but uh, do you have any other questions, Deuce? No. I just, number one, uh, Sid, I wanted to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule because guys and girls out in patio land, uh, this is the hardest working guys in movies right now, and I can tell you why, because he's been talking to me on Facebook Messenger, and most of his replies come at like 3 or 4 a.m., so, I mean, I know you must be doing long nights, like, making these scores and working your ass off. So, I mean, I, I just want to say thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, it's, it's really cool talking to you guys. Awesome. Well, we'll do so. We'll keep in contact with you. We'll let you know when the episode goes live. But like, like I said, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, whenever you want to come back on again to promote another film or you have another thing, another project you're working on. Or if you have friends that want to come on, feel free to send them our way because we'd love to have them. Absolutely. Uh, I will. Uh, I, I will take you up on that. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's it's uh, what is it like six sixteen on in California time right now? 
Uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a three hour difference. So we appreciate, you know, you taking the time uh, out of the time difference, too, because, you know, it's nine o'clock here. Yeah. Six o'clock over there. And I know you're Which, six how awesome is the Internet to be able to pull things like that's this That's so off. cool. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know? literally me and Sid found each other on Facebook. So you didn't need an agent. Like I talked to Sid and just things kind of worked out the way they did, which worked out perfectly for us. But like I said, Sid. Sid De La Cruz is the hardest working man in movies right now, especially when it comes to scoring. So check him out. Check out his films. Don't forget to check out Atone, which I'm sure will be coming out here in the near future. And check out some of his other movies that have come out. Go to IMDb. He's got a ton of movies, guys. You want to check out his stuff, listen to his stuff. And Sid, where can they find you on the Internet? It's just on Facebook. I don't have a Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. But you could just kind of search me on Sid De La Cruz. I think I'm the first person that pops up. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have a description in the uh, in the link of the episode so people can find you. Sounds good. Awesome, Sid. Thank you so much. You have a great night, and uh, best of luck composing. Thank you very much. You guys, too. All have right, a good have, night. A, good have night. a good night. Well, that was the amazing composer, Sid De La Cruz, here on the Happy Hour with Johnny and Deuce. Of course, you can find us at HH Podcast Show on the Twitter machine. Also, you can send us your emails to hhpodcastshow at gmail.com. Also, don't forget, we're going to have our good buddy, the Buck, the Mega Buck. We're going to be live with him again at the Retro Game Treasure HQ. We'd love to bring him your questions. So if you will put in the subject line, ask the Buck, send us your retro game questions because we'd love to ask those uh, to him. Also, don't forget, you can find us at facebook.com forward slash happy hour podcast show you can also find all of our older episodes at soundcloud.com forward slash happy hour podcast of course when you're on the twitter machine there's not one there's not two but there are three hashtags you want to put in hashtag happy, happy hour podcast, podcast hashtag hh podcast show and hashtag deuces on, on the, the loose. loose later see ya